So welcome back everybody. In today's episode, we are actually gonna be figuring out something I've never done before, how to flow control our hydraulics to a dual function attachment. All right, so if you're new to the channel or haven't seen it, I just recently got me an excavator grapple and we have been putting this thing to work, doing tons of hurricane and storm damage cleanup pulling logs out of the woods, brush debris. This has been such a huge helping hand. It's by far, and I mean by far better than I could have ever expected. It has dramatically sped up my hurricane type cleanup or just tree cleanup in general. So if you're not familiar with these style excavator grapples, it has a rotator right here. So I can make this spin 360 degrees either direction. And then of course we got the big clamp. So we can clamp brush from again, any direction we want, rotate logs, rotate brush, swing it over into trailers. It is fantastic that it has both of those functions. But therein lies one little bit of an issue that we're gonna address today. So I'm gonna cut back to some clips right here and show you how fast this rotator right here can spin this grapple. Long story short, it can spin way too fast. So imagine you have large logs or large debris piles, say like a 2,000 pound log like this. Well, we don't wanna spin that super fast. That is a lot of rotating momentum and whenever you go to stop, you don't want to start a heavy load quick and you don't want to stop a heavy load quick. You just don't want to be spinning something too fast. There's too much rotational force here. So luckily my machine, I can actually turn down my auxiliary hydraulic flow. The problem is we've got a huge cylinder right here and clamping range of motion is a lot more range of motion than a quick little spin. So I need to figure out how to slow the flow to the rotator but keep the flow going to the clamp just like I want it. And actually I've got this even turned down via the machine. Problem is whenever I turn down my machine hydraulic flows because I only have one set of hydraulics, it also turns down the rotator and the clamping force right here at the same time or clamping speed I should say. Well, I'm at the point I don't want the clamping speed to cut down anymore, but I want the rotational force to slow down. And in case you missed the video, I'm super blessed to have this. This is actually a creation between me and Bombalite. We've been working on this for months. This is number one of one, a beta type unit that uh, Bombalite's hoping to bring to the public. So I brought this idea to them a while back about some specific specs, weights, and everything else that I was looking for in an excavator grapple. And after many months of us kind of uh, putting all the pieces together, working with our engineers, this is what's finally showed up here. And I've been putting it to the test and it's been fantastic no issues, no problems, other than I'd just like to slow the rotator down. Now, the cool thing is with me having a beta unit providing all this feedback, eventually what's gonna wind up coming to the public is any changes that we make. So I'm gonna actually put a flow reducer in line today on the rotator to slow down the speed to make this even more user-friendly. And then whenever the production design comes out, they'll take all the feedback and infield testing that I give them and make any changes to this before it goes into production. That is awesome to be in a position like this to provide the feedback. So after days of heavy testing, nothing's bent, everything's good, but I wanna slow down the rotational speed of the rotator. And here's how we're gonna do it. I'm actually gonna remove these two fittings right here, which goes to the rotator, and we're gonna put a plug in tap it out and kind of play with the orifice size to restrict the flow. And as you can see, I'm working with very limited room in here before people start recommending. They do make dial rotational, uh, you know, flow reducers, so to speak. By the time you add all the little fittings to them and try to stick them in here, there's just no way. It would be junky and all in the way. I haven't found specific style reducer fittings that are the exact thread pattern and all that I need here, but I'm sure they do exist. It's just easier for me to kind of do what I'm gonna show you today to test this out, find the right orifice size, and uh, let's play around with this. And then we'll pass all this along to the manufacturer, our feedback, and they can put the proper fitting in that's gonna go out to the general public. All right, so now that we got these unique fittings out, it looks like a three quarter inch on one end, and then your standard three eighths on the other, here's what I'm thinking. And someone actually gave me this suggestion. So I picked up a pack of stainless set screws right here. You know, if you know what they are, you know what they are. But stainless shouldn't have a problem interacting with hydraulic fluids. We don't want nothing rusting or giving us any sort of an issue. And the thought is to actually tap this hole out right here on this end I'm gonna find the closest set screw that I can. Looks like the uh, 5 16 is the winner. I mean, it starts to drop right in there. I don't even think we're gonna to have to drill that out. So what we're gonna do is tap that hole, 
put this 5 16 set screw in there and then we're going to go over to the drill press and we're going to start drilling a small hole through this, basically reducing this orifice size. So we're going from this large 3 8 opening all the way down to, well, we'll do something like an eighth. Heck, we might start out with a 30 seconds, a 16th, an eighth. We'll just kind of work our way up. We can adjust the hole size. So we're trying to just dramatically reduce flow down through these fittings. Now, like I already explained in the intro to this video, yes, there's other options out there, but they just don't fit and work. This is a quick solution to kind of play around with, uh, you know, little orifice sizes. And then I can get this information back to the company. And then, then whatever production model that decides to hit the scenes, they can already have a fitting that's maybe all plugged up on the other end with a little drilled through hole. I mean, that's something I've thought about too, welding this up, but this is gonna work good. Now, my only concern with doing this right here is this ever working its way back out, and I don't want this hunk of stainless to wind up in any of the rotator parts or the valve parts potentially damaging them. So once we find this size opening and hole that we like, flow that we like, the threads that we're gonna put in here, I'm actually gonna take a punch and dimple them so this can never back out and we're not gonna thread it all the way through if I can help it. That way it can never come out the other end. It can only come out one direction. And like I said, we're gonna make for sure that we stop that. This isn't a situation where I necessarily trust Loctite or anything like that, but if we actually damage the threads once this is set, um, it should never back itself back out. It's not gonna re-thread itself. All right, so y'all excuse the mess in the background. I've got a massive project going on that I'm not gonna let y'all know about. We're gonna have such a cool video coming up. So my table is a mess, but I'm not cleaning it up just to do a quick video like this. So I'm gonna come into my like a uh, tap and die set and it just so happens this tells me that this is a 5 16 plug by 18 threads that should be 18 threads per inch if i remember correctly so i can just come in here and find the 5 16 tap and i'll just double check the threads match up all right definitely gonna need to get this in the vise to hold this while i tap it and uh, no more material then we'll remove them because we're not even drilling this out i'm not concerned about pressure issues or problems and keep in mind this is on the rotator side so it's not like this is the side that's actually going to be grappling and potentially holding the log causing some sort of safety issue should we ever wind up with a blowout or leak here, but I just don't foresee that happening, honestly. Oh yeah, that hole size is absolutely perfect, as is for a 5 16 tap. I don't even have to drill it out, which is great. I wanna remove as little material as possible. I don't wanna tap all the way through for the reasons I explained. I don't want this coming out the other side. So we're just gonna go nice and slow with this. I'm probably not even gonna go any further than that and see if the set screw will go all the way in. I guess it's probably not, but we can't add metal back once we remove it. And we're gonna constantly blow this out and keep things nice and clean, especially before we reinstall it because the last thing we want is metal shavings going into our hydraulic system. Even though it is a filtered system, we don't need those potential shavings going into the rotator. Oh, look at that, that goes in like butter. Oh man, we may have just absolutely nailed that perfectly. All right, we got the depth almost perfect, but again, I wanna go down just a little deeper because I wanna be able to dimple some threads in. I mean, that would work as is once we drill it out. But don't forget, I want to dimple some threads in so this can never come back out. And we definitely don't want to dimple this concave area because this is a compression fitting for the hydraulics. This is the male side. We've got a female side that fits in perfectly. And the last thing we'd want to do is uh, damage our sealing surface right here. So we'll go right back to uh, tapping this even deeper. We actually have a lot more depth down in there than I realized. And I've actually seen some of these online, but I just can't find the size that I need um, that has a little groove cut on the inside and you put a snap ring in there. I don't have a tool to cut a groove for a snap ring. That's why I'm gonna do the thread dimple technique. All right, check that out. Absolutely beautiful. This may work out so quick and easy. It's gonna be hard to focus, but See our set screws down in there and we have, you know, uh, several threads exposed above it that we can once again hit with the punch, damage the thread so this can never back out. I'm long ways away from tapping all the way through so it can't come this direction. That's absolutely perfect.
All right, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but you see the hole that we've drilled through? I decided to start off with a 7 64th. See how you can see through it. Back to the darkness. Man, that worked out so good. I think we'll go ahead and dimple the threads in because I have these threaded perfectly. I like the depth of thread and I can always drill the hole out even after I dimple the threads. All right, this feels wrong, but we need to do it. Let's purposely uh, damage the threads. <sighs> so this won't never come back out and I got a thin, thin punch to do that with. Man, I need a better vice. Really, really do. Ugh. Okay, I can't even get it to back out. Perfect. All right, so let's test this out. Play around with some different flows here and see what we're working with. So steel, wow. Still a little, way slower, no doubt, but actually a little faster than what I was expecting. Play around with this a minute. I should start out with a tiny hole. Okay, now here's one thing I can notice. Over the previous orifice, look, look how I can feather this. I could not hardly feather before. It was just kind of wide open or nothing. It was really hard to feather. I can go fast. I can go slow. All right, definitely easier to feather down and control it. But man, I guess I should start out with an even smaller orifice. I already thought that was so tiny. But way, and I mean way slower than before. This will actually be usable as is. Yeah, see that's, that's safe enough right there for me. It's nice being at a feather down that low because I could not do that before. Of course, we still have our clamping function, so let's cycle through all this. I wanna make sure I don't have no leaks. Go to the rotation function, and all right, that's as slow as I can make it go. That's a little too slow, but at least we have that option. Then we can feather on up. Okay, definitely much better, but I'll admit, I should have started out with an even smaller orifice. All right, so let's come over here and do a real world test, y'all. Grab one of these smaller logs right here. Check out the rotational spin and force that we're placing on this. Always best to uh, start small. All right, that's nice and smooth on the rotation. Clamp that pretty quick because it was starting to fall in between some other logs. Okay, that's still a lot of weight right there. So let's see if we can spin it nice and slow. Oh, all right, I'm just feathering it in. See, that's perfect speed right there. Now, yeah, we can actually go even faster. I don't know that I ever want to go quite that fast. So even with that small orifice that we have, we can go fast if we want to. But I'm able to really feather in a rotational speed now, something I couldn't really do before. I can feather it all the way down. Let's see how slow we can get. About right there. That's good. I like that. Actually, a little faster is okay, which we can easily do. Just depends on the size of log that I'm having. Light brush, I don't mind whipping that around. All right, so a fun little project. And yes, I know there's many different ways you can flow control, but I need to keep things nice, compact, and safe. 
the flow control valves just weren't going to work and I definitely can't be extending stuff out to get torn off or broken. I've got a small area so actually reducing the size of the fittings, the orifice and the fittings is the proper way to go. Now I'm sure somebody makes an actual already reduced fitting. I've seen some before. Some with snap rings, some that have uh, machined holes internally. I just couldn't in my quick little search find the ones that I need. That's up to the company to find those to put on the production units. At least I had me a quick solution here that was suggested to me that I used and that works perfectly fine. Okay, yeah, I could have done an even smaller orifice, which is crazy because we went tiny small, but that's all in figuring out hydraulics. I'm definitely much happier with the speed that I'm seeing now versus before. I almost didn't record this, but hey, y'all love watching a little tinkering and things like that. So I figured why not? I was already going to be out in the shop kind of getting this prepped and ready because coming up in one of the next episodes, we have some very exciting stuff coming. This is about to get another huge, and I mean huge workout, really the rest of the winter.